Continuing on a series I started a while ago, today we are wondering why Edmund II is better known as Edmund Ironside. How did he get this nickname and why? Basic information first, Edmund II was born around 990 and died on November 30th of 1016. He was King of England from April the 23rd until his death in 1016, so just about seven months in total. Ironside is defined as a strong person with great power of endurance or resistance. Edmund II was king at a very tumultuous time in England's history, the period of Viking invasions. It was his courageous fight for the throne that earned him the nickname Ironside in what would turn out to be only a seven month reign. He spent the majority of it fighting for his efforts to the Saxon cause. But let's backtrack a little and see how he earned this nickname, and more importantly, how did he become the king? He was the son of Ethelred II, also known as Ethelred the Unready, and Ethelred's first wife. But he wasn't born to be king. They had three sons, Athelstan, Egbert and Edmund. His two older brothers died before him, and by 1014, at the age of 24, Edmund became heir apparent to the throne. Ethelred remarried to Emma of Normandy, who had two sons together, but she deserves a whole video herself if you want to check out her story too. In 1013, Viking King Sven Forkbeard launched an attack on Anglo-Saxon England. He seized the throne and forced Ethelred to flee the country to Normandy with his new young family. We don't know, however, where Edmund went, possibly to the safety of allies and out of reach of the Vikings. As fate would have it, Sven died just five weeks later, on the 3rd of February 1014, never having been crowned. He intended to pass his crown to his son Canute. But Ethelred took the confusion as opportunity to come back home and suddenly retrieve power, driving Canute back home to Denmark to regroup. Ethelred ravaged all those who supported Sven and Canute, showing no mercy. Edmund showed dissent by marrying one of the widows of a Danish lord his father had killed from supporting Sven, actively acting against his father's brutal actions. Edmund acquired land and power in the Danelaw area. As father and son fought, Canute launched a new raid in August of 1015. Edmund amassed the army against Canute, but Ethelred lacked the leadership skills to unite the fragmented group. In the fight of the 23rd of April 1016, Ethelred died, and upon his death, Edmund became king. As opposed to his father, famously known as Ethelred the Unready, Edmund showed leadership skills and decision making. In the following months, there were many skirmishes between the two forces, with no decisive outcome until October. He kept raising more men and wouldn't give up the fight. This wouldn't let up on Canute, preventing him from cementing his reign and being constantly at battle. It was at the Battle of Asindun on the 18th of October 1016 that Canute's forces finally overwhelmed Edmund. This is believed to have been due to the treachery of Edric Striona, an elderman of Mercia. What had begun as a fight for the crown between their fathers ended once again with a Viking victory. But it didn't end in death, at least not yet. There was a peace settlement struck between the two men. Both parties needed a break and a rest from the fighting. Perhaps Edmund realised he was at the end of his tether and was running out of options. And even if he was to succeed, he had very young heirs. Rumour has it Edmund wanted to fight Canute in single combat. And in fact, one account from 1120 recounts a duel did take place, ending in a stalemate, with the two rulers ending the duel as friends. But it was Canute who proposed a compromise, the partitioning of territory, the northeast and the southwest. Canute held lands north of the Thames and Edmund retained Wessex. This agreement, known as the Treaty of Alne, would hold until one of the pair died. Suspiciously, just one month later, Edmund met his end on the 30th of November 1016, and Canute became king across the English territories. It was thought to have been a sudden death, however he was a young and healthy man, nothing to indicate this was natural. It is most likely that Edmund was wounded at Asendun and died later from exhaustion and his injuries. 
But you could also say that Edmund died under mysterious circumstances, especially because very little contemporary records even mention it. 12th century writers tell the wild tale that Edmund was in the privy and was stabbed from below in the intestines, and the rumour has since spread that he was murdered during the night on the toilet. This story, however, only appears at its earliest in the 1120s, written by Henry of Huntingdon, over a hundred years after the event occurred. This certainly may have been an assassination, perhaps one sent by Edric Striona, one of his own earls who had already betrayed him at the final battle of Assendum. After his death, Canute was able to become sole ruler over England, but there was no contemporary accusation of Canute for plotting the murder. Many noted Canute thought of Edmund as a brother after their agreement to divide the nation, and even visited his grave on the anniversary of his death. Canute went as far as to kill Edric, the noble who had betrayed Edmund in battle years earlier, and the one most accused of his murder. Edmund's widow fled with their young sons, Edmund and Edward, to Russia and later to Hungary. His descendants went on to fight for the claim for the throne, after the Norman invasion with William the Conqueror. Edith of Scotland married Henry I, reuniting the lines again. So there we have Edmund's life story, but now let's get back to the question at hand. It is first recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in 1057 that, simply, King Edmund was called Ironside for his valour. He showed strength, decisiveness, valour, which could perhaps be perceived as even more impressive after the experience under his father with Ethelred the Unready. He was able to attract loyalty and support in his people, who really believed in him as their leader, and because of strength shown in the face of the Viking threat. Ironside became his nickname, and is still what we call him today. So now you know why Edmund is Edmund Ironside. Hope you enjoyed this quick video today, and make sure to like and subscribe for the next video. Goodbye for now.